Hey, thanks for checking out Nuts and Bolts with Tone. Welcome to my channel. Today we're going to talk about one of my favorite diesels to work on. Probably because I work on them so often because there's so many of them on the road. Unfortunately, they break, but when there's that many on the road, they're bound to break. Anything that has that many on the road is going to break more. You're going to see it break more often because there's just more. That's the six liter power stroke. I make lots of videos on those because I like to work on them and I like to help you out on how to diagnose your own power stroke and how to fix it. Instead of taking it to a shop, or if you're a technician trying to learn how to work on diesels, like once upon a time I was, uh, it'll help you out. If you didn't go to diesel training and uh, you didn't go to diesel school, you don't really know a whole lot about diesels and you learn by looking at them in the shop. So maybe this will help you out and help you understand some, some, uh, some data in the scan tools that a lot of people don't even know. I work with a lot of guys, and a lot of guys don't even know some of this stuff that I've figured out over the years, as I'm not a diesel trained tech. I never went to diesel school. I've been to some classes, but most of what I learned was trial and error and you know researching online and things like that. So the case study I'm gonna talk about today is a 2005, this is a F350 Dually six liter Ford pickup. Now, this thing has 186,000 miles, and it comes in with the code P2262, turbo boost pressure not detected. All right, so, now, while I'm driving this, so I go out and I drive it, and when I first went to go drive it, it only took a couple stoplights before it started acting up. Basically, I'm driving, it has tons of boost, and then out of nowhere, it has no boost, and I feel like I'm going nowhere. Now, you can get kind of lost with these kind of things if you don't understand what you're looking at. So, first we're gonna talk about the turbo. Now, the turbo on a six liter is a VGT turbo, meaning that it has a unison ring in there that turns. Now, you got, a, you got an actuator that turns it, and the inside of the turbo is an actuator that turns like this. And when it does, it moves this unison ring, which has these fins that open them up and close them. So you have low speed boost and high speed boost. That's how they get low and high speed boost out of one single turbo. They vary it, right? So they use the same thing on a lot of manufacturers. Duramax, Cummins, a lot of these in manufacturers, they have the same turbos. The 6.4 Power Stroke, they had two turbos one for low, one for high. That was a crappy design. However, that was just a crappy engine, a whole bad decision that they made on that whole system. But then the 6.7 Power Stroke is the same way. Got the variable geometry turbo. Now, whenever you're diagnosing a power issue, a boost loss issue, a turbo issue, there's one PID that you wanna look at first and it's really important. And that is the VGT PID. Now, this only applies on late 04 and up, because 03 to 04, the VGT is not an actual, it's not an actual value. It's an inferred value. It's the computer what they think the VGT is based on other parameters. So in those vehicles, the VGT pit is incorrect. So you cannot use this for a 03, 04. Late 04 and up, this is very important. So, what you wanna do is you wanna go out and drive the vehicle. And you wanna drive it, you can drive it under multiple different boost scenarios. Heavy load, mild load. What I like to do is take it on the freeway. And uh, this, this can also be accompanied by a PO299, which is a boost code. And so, basically, I'll be on the freeway, and you can vary your load up and down, up and down. You're looking at this PID, and now what you want to do is you want to set your scanner to graph mode because you're looking for two specific numbers, 15 and 85%. Now, the VGT operates between 15 and 85%. So the way you want to look at this is if you're driving this thing and let's say you're on the freeway and it hits 85%, or in my case, this truck I'm driving hit 15%, okay? I was on service streets, 15%. Now, 
any time it hits 15 and 85 percent. Provided your exhaust is not plugged and everything is working correctly, if your VGT hits those numbers, that means that that unison ring inside that turbo is sticking. So the computer, it tried to move it, the computer tried to move it like this, let's say they tried to move it to this position, and it only got to here. It's not building the boost that it needs, so the computer keeps trying to move it. And what happens is the VGT goes to 15% or 85%. Now if that happens, that means that the computer has maxed out it is its available range to try to build the boost needed in the scenario you're in. Now if it does that and everything else is okay, then that means that your unison ring is sticking. And the way you fix that is, well the way you confirm that is you get, you recommend time to pull your turbo off and you take your turbo apart and you look at the unison ring and you'll see it'll be stuck in there. Now, I have a video where I took a turbo apart and I can show you what it looks like when you take it apart. Show you what it looks like, show you how to clean it because a lot of guys, they get this and they think that the turbo is sticking and they just sell a turbo. Man, you could actually just take these things apart and clean them. Annie sees them, put them back together. As long as your spot in your turbo where the actuator rides, as long as it's not damaged, okay? Let me show you right now what that looks like. All right, so here's what the unison ring looks like. So this is what this is what your fins ride in, right? So this is where when it turns, it opens them and then they follow this like that. Because in the in the exhaust side of the turbo there's a pin sticking up and the fins sit on that pin and then there's a slot here and so the slot is what turns. Well, what happens is this actually sticks to the intake side of the compressor. And the only way that you can't rebuild it is if you took it apart. I've only seen this one time where I took it apart and I had to sell a turbo. And that is where this pin rides right here. Now you can see in the, in the picture right here, you can kind of see where it's kind of worn on this bottom edge here. That means because the pin is digging into this unison ring. Now I have this one just for testing purposes, uh, but normally if it's dug into the unison ring at all, I won't try to fix it. So this is what the unison ring looks like, and that means that it's sticking. And that's how you can tell if your turbo is the problem. You can clean it, and he sees it, put it back together, everything is fine. Now the key though with what I want to explain is there's a few PIDs that are really important. The first PID is the MAP sensor. The MAP sensor reads 14.9 PSI, 14 to 14.9 14 PSI, when the truck is running, just that item. So the way that you determine boost, one way that you determine boost, the only way I ever determined boost was you take your map sensor and you go drive it and you subtract your map sensor reading from your reading at wide open throttle when you're at maximum boost and then that number is your actual boost reading. So 25 pounds. I think the one I was driving was 24 pounds it built. So it'll it'll subtract out to 24. Now, there's another PID in there that's really important and it helps you not have to do the math. Really easy. It's called MGP. That is manifold gauge pressure. That is the calculation of the boost. The computer's already taking your map reading and it's calculating it out to what the actual boost is. So, and I've, I've worked with so many guys that work on diesels, and I've never met one guy that knew that MGP was your boost pressure. I just drove a 7.3 this morning, same thing, MGP. I didn't have to calculate out the map sensor. It's a pain when you're driving on the road and you're trying to subtract 14.9 from whatever your reading is, see how much boost you got. So MGP, make sure you look at that pit. Now, there is another scenario that can happen that will bite you in the butt if you don't know about this. And this actually happened to me. Uh, I didn't get bit in the butt. This happened to my diagnosis and I caught it. 
That's why I'm sharing it with you. So, another important PID is exhaust back pressure. So in this six liter I'm talking about, when I would go drive it and it would have no power, what I would notice is that the exhaust back pressure PID would read 36.9 PSI. And the testing procedure I found says that the MAP sensor, if your boost pressure, if your exhaust back pressure is high, 37 pounds PSI, and your MAP sensor is 20 or lower, then you have plugged exhaust. You, well, you have plugged exhaust, a plugged cooler, you could have a bad EGR valve, got a bad MAP sensor, a bad a plugged intake port, but most likely it's plugged exhaust. So in my case, my MAP sensor dropped all the way to 14.9, my exhaust back pressure was 36.9. So that told me that I had plugged exhaust most likely. So the first step, because it's the most common, is to drop the cat. So all you gotta do is unbolt your two nuts on the cat, right before the cat, 15 millimeters. I took the two 13s off for the exhaust hanger, that way it could move a little bit, and it literally only moved about this much. So I had about this much of the exhaust pipe exposed with no, without going through the cat. And I went and drove it again. Guess what happened? When I did that, I built 25 pounds of boost, 24.9 pounds of boost, always. Every time I gave it full throttle, 25 pounds of boost. Now, since I had the problem before and I took it around on two test drives, the same, the same test drive twice just to make sure, because I've had times where I drive a vehicle, a certain test drive, and it, and it acts up. And then I take it on another test drive after I've changed something and it doesn't act up and I think that's the problem and something happened and it took two test drives for it to happen. So just to make sure I took it on two test drives. Two test drives, never lost boost. So guess what? The cat's plug, needs a cat. Unfortunately, it's on back order for like six months here. So I don't know what they're gonna do because we have smog, so we can't cut it off, we can't disable it, we can't remove it, we can't straight pipe it. The customer can do that, but we can't as a shop, because in California it's illegal. Uh, so anyways, so I think they're gonna take it, and I don't know what they're gonna do with it, uh, but they're gonna figure it out. But anyways, in this case, remember that, exhaust back pressure pit should not be high when your map is low. Remember your VGT pit, very, very important. Uh, Sticking turbo, really easy. I will put a link at the end of this video to a, a, I will put it at the end of this video, I will put a link to the video that shows you how to take the turbo apart and how to clean it. It's pretty easy. You can have this turbo off in 10 minutes, clean it up, put it back. Uh, so it's not super hard and it doesn't take long to take it apart and clean it. And actually, another little tip for you is anytime you're working on a six liter and you pull the turbo off, I recommend that, well you recommend, what I recommend is that I sell an hour and a half to take the turbo apart and clean everything up and Andy sees everything and put it back together. Because it's an hour and a half, there's no parts involved, I already have the turbo install kit because I took it off and that way they're not going to have a problem in 20,000 miles or even less. I've had them where, uh, where people took them apart, took the turbo off, did some work, put it back on and then 10,000 miles had a stick and turbo. And then I had to take it apart because I didn't recommend it in the first place because I didn't work on it. So, little keys why you want to do this. Remember, you work, on the, you work on a vehicle and if within four months it has a problem, in their eyes, you didn't fix it because it's doing the same thing it did before. Even if it's something different, it doesn't matter. To them, you didn't fix it. So, anyways, and oh, one, one more tip, and I don't know if this is true, I haven't seen it yet, and uh, I'll research it, maybe I'll put a, a link in the description about this, but I heard uh, from an old service writer that they sell an updated unison ring that's not supposed to stick as bad. It's supposed to be better. It must be a different kind of metal. So I'll research that, and if that's the case, I will put a little note in the description, and I'll put a link to that updated unison ring. So, thank you for watching the video. I hope this helps you out with your six liter, or just with Fords in general. That MGP pit, don't forget, super important. And don't forget, if you're ever looking at boost in a diesel, it's your map sensor subtracted from your map sensor pit under load. That's how you determine boost in a diesel if there's no boost gauge or a boost pit.
in a sprinter, they have a boost pit. You just have to calculate it because it's in a way different kind of calculation. So you got to go to Google and calculate it. Works out. So anyways, hope you enjoyed this video. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button and hit that bell. You get notified of all my future content, which you're definitely going to want to see. Also, check me out on Instagram at Nuts and Bolts with Tone for my daily life as a mechanic. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.